Hi friends, welcome to another YouTube video. My name is Sonia Barlow, entrepreneur, author and presenter and today's video is all things networking. Now, I consider myself a great networker but I've definitely been burnt in the past and recently I've jumped back on TikTok and I've been sharing all my networking tips, tricks and hacks and turns out that there's so many of you who want to know about networking the TikToks are going viral and I've been requested to create this video so here it goes in today's video we're going to cover all things networking what it is why you need to do it what the benefits are how to overcome rejection and how to show up as your best self especially when networking is something that you fear now very simply let's start from the beginning what is networking networking is building a relationship networking is being confident enough to show up it's listening to other people it's understanding their problems it's seeing how you can help them and add value but most importantly it's following up now those are the five steps of networking in a nutshell but sometimes it's not that easy i remember when i started networking and i was probably at university at this point so about 10 years ago it was so difficult you had sweats before you went into a room. You were unsure what value you have to offer. You just basically wanted to go and network for a job, right? I know when I was at uni, I was like, okay, if I network here, I'm going to land this job. And so I networked anywhere and everywhere, trying to just show up with the intent that this would get me hired. Turns out that's not true. And actually, because it wasn't authentic, people didn't believe me. And so when it comes to networking, I really want to break down everything that we possibly can. What to do before a networking event, what to do during, and then what to do post networking. Let's start with why it's important. Now there's that saying that you are the sum of the seven people that you surround yourself with. Absolutely. So think back and think, who am I actually surrounding myself with and are they helping me to achieve the career of my dreams? Yes or no, I'm going to leave that to you. The other fun fact is that 80% of your opportunities come through your network. So if you're not surrounding yourself with the people that can unlock those doors, they're not really unlocking those opportunities and it's gonna be really difficult for you to achieve whatever milestone it is that you've created for yourself. Whilst I was doing some research for this episode, I saw a really good clip from CBS Morning and it said two things. One is that if you have strong people skills, i.e. networking skills, you can increase your happiness by 42%. So networking actually makes you happier. But most importantly, if you have strong people skills and if you were to network in a relevant and appropriate way, that can increase your salary by $29,000. Now, if there's any better business case for networking, it is that networking will make you rich. But it definitely will put some money in your pocket. So let's break it down. If networking is all about building relationships and listening to other people, you want to make sure that any networking event you are attending is relevant to what you want to do, the industry that you are in or that you want to level up in, and you as a character, as a persona. So a good example being is I personally am a little bit more on the serious side. I don't want to be, I don't need to be, but I'm not really online funny, right? So that means that I don't necessarily network with those who are in the comedy industry because that's not an industry in which I'm in or I'm trying to tap into. A lot of my networking comes in business, comes in presenting and media, comes in authorship, really is around the industries in which not only am I passionate about that I want to level up in. So if one of my objectives is to have my own talk show, which it is, that's why we do this stuff too, I need to make sure that I'm networking with individuals who have their own talk show that do podcasts and videos for a living, that are possibly in the media and show business, that have connections to those who are commissioning and editors, and most importantly, that have some lived or learned experience. So that's my people. So you have to think about what you're trying to achieve, who those people are that you're therefore meeting and where they're going to be. You then do some research. You can find networking events on Instagram, on Twitter, on threads, on LinkedIn, on Eventbrite, on Meetup. The Like-Minded Females Network, which I run, we put our monthly networking events on Eventbrite. And actually, I'm not gonna lie, at the beginning, I didn't really think people would show up, but now we have sold out events every month and individuals are getting scholarships to Oxford all the way to landing new jobs. We've had a 
£2,000 opportunity come our way just through one of our networking events. And most importantly, you're building a community. And that's really important because they might not be able to help you today, but once they know what you're looking for, they might be able to help you tomorrow. So pre any networking event, research. Who's gonna be there? What does the agenda look like? Is it relevant for what you're trying to achieve? It may be that you wanna learn about a new industry, that's completely fine. But if you are in a particular sector, demographic, or you're trying to find new jobs, extra gigs, opportunities, think about what is the next step or three to get me there. Prior to any networking event, make sure that you are dressing up for success. Now that doesn't just mean what you wear, even though what you wear is really important. So I make sure that prior to any networking event, I have my power armor. That might be my nails are colored, I have a lipstick on. It may be that I'm wearing a bright color because that makes me feel more powerful and confident. But also, and most importantly, that means I'm practicing. I'm practicing my introduction, I'm practicing what it is that I want out of the event, I'm practicing how people are possibly going to perceive me. And a big part of that is going back to the drawing books, getting out your notepad and pen, and possibly writing some kind of introduction, or just mind mapping everything that's in your brain, putting out on paper, thinking about your fears, your anxieties, what you wanna get out of it, what good looks like, what bad looks like, and just really being in a position where you're capturing your thoughts on a sheet. Now, the practicing bit, I think people often get shy or embarrassed about, but everyone practices. Before I hosted London Tech Week in 2022, I spent a whole week genuinely recording myself and my introduction, speaking with a pretend microphone in front of the mirror and even wearing different outfits to see which one made me feel the most comfortable. Prior to any networking event, you also wanna make sure that you have a clear agenda or a clear reason as to why you're attending. That might be as simple as I want to learn about this one thing, AI, technology, skills, YouTube, TikTok, or whatever it might be. Or it might be, I just want to educate myself. I want to show that I'm taking interest. I wanna do it for the clout. Let's be really honest about why you're attending and that's completely fine. There's a very common saying, which is fake it till you make it. I think as I grow up, I'm not really into that. I don't believe it. I don't think it's a matter of faking it till you're making it. It's a matter of taking a step back and taking stock and understanding what you have to offer. That might be you're young and you're fun. That might be that you have digital skills because you're making TikToks. That might be that you started a business when you were 16 and it failed, but you're still growing. It might be that you are super keen on learning about video editing and so you've done that in the background yourself and you've got all this skill set that you wanna share. It might just be that you are really hot on social trends right now and you wanna make sure that other people are also learning from you, whatever it is. You have something to offer. So it's not a fake until you make it scenario, it's a take a step back and think about what your purpose is, what your values are, what three things you can offer because everyone can offer something focus on them, strengthen them as a muscle and move forward. Faking it till you're making it is really, I think at this, in this day and age, it's slightly inappropriate and not relevant when you have so much on social media and there's so much noise. So anyone and everyone can wake up and say they're super successful, but where are the receipts and the evidence to show for it? So I'm not a fan of faking it till you're making it. I am a fan of knowing who you are, building on the characteristics that already exist and really just enhancing your own personality showcasing that into the room and the people that stick will stick and the people who don't it's completely fine and you can adapt and you can grow as you go along but anyways going back to the point so pre any networking event i would also recommend for you to block it out into your calendar and schedule there are different types of networking events there are events in the morning which have breakfast or events in the lunchtime which often can be anything from an exercise and gym class to a walk in the park to a nice lunch scenario or there are drinks and dinner events after work. I personally know that I'm a morning person. I'm awake from like 6 a.m. and I'm super cheery and, and just ready for the day. After 7 p.m., I'm a little bit useless to everyone, including myself. And so I tend to focus on the morning events. That also means that I can hack breakfast on someone else's budget, that I can go and enjoy people when they're up and early and don't really have the complications or the pressures of their day, including, well, especially if they're working full time. 
and it also means that I can get my bulk of networking done and dusted with and then I have more time to follow up. Again, all of this is available online so I would just say take some time to do the research, don't worry if you don't know much, it's completely fine and just give it a go. There are also free networking events and paid networking events. Now, honestly, I think if you're just starting out and you're just wanting to get into the networking vibe and just see also what sticks for you, go for the free ones. The free ones also, you don't have an obligation to stay the whole time. And so it could be, I'm going to this free event that obviously someone has spent so much time and effort arranging, right? So definitely say thank you to them, but go to this free event. I'm gonna go there for an hour. I'm gonna get these three things done and then I'm gonna leave. And it's just all about practicing. When you are networking, I have this really good rule that I created that actually really does work and it's called the 321 rule. And if you wanna find out more about it, I have a whole book so you can read about it even more. It's around page 90 or so. Okay, so we've had a good conversation around pre-networking. Now let's get to the networking event itself. Prior to any networking event, I'm a big believer of getting there five to 10 minutes early. I like to do that for my own peace of mind. What that really looks like is getting there early, scoping out the room, people watching to see what other people are getting up to, going and grabbing yourself that warm cup of tea and just finding your stride. I find that if you go straight away into networking, the doors open, there's loads of people, it's just really overwhelming. And I'm not an introvert, but actually recently I've been getting more overwhelmed with the amount of people I'm around or big crowds and I do get anxiety. And so if you think of it from that premise, it's relatable. And so it's not about being an introvert or an extrovert, it's just about making sure that you're setting yourself up for success and you're comfortable before you're entering a space, especially if it's an unknown. When you get to the event, my top tip is most definitely to go and find someone who's standing by themselves or find someone who's in an open semicircle. So what that means is there'll be a group of three to four people who are speaking together, but there's a big space open, so which, which basically means they're inviting you into that conversation. If it's a closed circle, so people are like this, it's really hard to scoot yourself into that. When you go, especially if you're on that one-to-one, -one, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Sonia. And the reason as to why I'm here is because I wanna learn more about this industry and I'm really interested in topic X. What brings you to the event? Again, we spoke about this earlier. The most important thing here is to really bring it back to that person, is to make it about them, is to listen and learn from their agenda before you bring your own into it. If you're in a semicircle and you don't feel confident enough or comfortable enough to introduce yourself or to really spark a conversation, that's completely fine. Go and stand, smile and nod. Hi, I'm Sonia. I'm just gonna let you all finish on the conversation and absorb what you're sharing. Hi, I'm Sonia, great to be here. I don't mean to interrupt, I'm just here to listen and learn. Hi, I'm Sonia, great to be here. I'm just gonna take a step back and please carry on the conversation, I don't mean to interrupt. Be positive, be optimistic, be nice, but also lay down those foundations and boundaries and say, you know what, I'm not the most comfortable, but I'm here to listen and learn from you. And again, that peps up other people. Everyone has different drivers. Some people might listen to that and be like, oh, okay, they wanna learn, I'm gonna share more, which is a benefit for everyone. When you think about introducing yourself, so I've written about this in the book and I think it's page, let me find it. So it's page 88. How to introduce yourself in three easy steps. An introduction, which is introducing yourself, your brand, and potentially your business, your career, your job, or what you're looking for, is really a simple formula. It's introduction equals principles plus successes plus goals. So your principles are your definition of your values, how you want to live, or your mission and life statement. Your success is an articulation of your achievements directly related to the principles, and your goals is the identification of what is your big vision and why. So it sounds like a mouthful, but my introduction might be, hi, I'm Sonia. I'm attending this event today because I would like to meet commissioning editors who might be interested in producing my talk show. In the last three years, I've built up my own podcast, a great social following, a business unit, I am a presenter on the BBC, and I have really styled and trialed different videos to see which suits. And one of my goals therefore is to have my own talk show in the next three years where I talk about tech, travel, and business-based topics. That's my introduction. 
It shows you who I am, what I've done, what I bring to the table, but also what the ask is. The reason why that might be smooth to some extent is because I've practiced. And that's really important when it comes to networking. The overarching theme here is you, networking is not something that you are going to pick up and be great at overnight. It is an exercise, a skill that you build over time. It's a muscle that you strengthen and it really is about practicing and evolving and adapting. And also, you might feel like actually these people that you're now networking with aren't really the vibe that you're going for, aren't really adding value in the right way and that's completely fine. You take a step back and you start again. Now, if we go back to you going to an open semicircle and introducing yourself, you can also spark up the conversation by saying things like, what brings you to this event? Did you see that relevant point or news feature today on BBC? What are your thoughts about it? It's really interesting. This is my first networking event. Do you have any tips? And ultimately what you want to do is you don't want it to be a yes or no question. You want to really evoke some conversation and bring them into it. When it comes to how to network for success, now I have something called the 321 rule. So again, the 321 rule is available in the book. And the 321 rule is really simple and I promised it's worked. It has, it's worked for thousands and thousands of people. The 321 rule is really simple. It's at any given networking opportunity, you want to have conversations with at least three people. That is your number, just three. If you've done three in the first 10 minutes, great, you can leave, but three is your number. Of those three people, you want to ultimately try and connect with two of them. And of those two people, at least once a month, you wanna have a virtual coffee or conversation with someone new. So over the course of the year, you are meeting at least 36 people, but you are having in-depth introduction conversations with 12 of them. And those 12 can unlock so many opportunities. Remember, 80% of your opportunities come through your network. So if there's 12 new people that are learning about you, what you're doing, what you're looking for, how you can help, but also what your big vision is, they could be opening doors for you in their network because they're surrounded by individuals that you may not be. When it comes to ending those networking conversations, a question that I constantly receive on TikTok is how to close that conversation, connect with them and then follow up. So in terms of closing the conversation, it's really as simple as, it was great meeting you, I'm sorry I have to dash out now, but you made a really interesting point on X. Is it okay if I connect with you via email, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and I can send you some more information or a resource that I've learned, or I can follow up on topic Y, whatever it is. So really simply, closing one. Hi Sonny, it was really great to meet you, I'm sorry I have to dash. Is it okay if we connect on LinkedIn and we stay in touch? Hi Sonia, it was really great to meet you. Maybe don't say hi, we're already talking. Sonia, it was really great to meet you. I'm sorry I have to head out now. You made a really interesting point on podcasts. Is it okay if I connect with you via email and I'd love to send you the podcast that I'm recently listening to because I think it might benefit the conversation you're having. Sonia, it was great to meet you. I don't really have anything right now to offer, but I'd love to stay connected to see how we can help each other in the future. Is it okay if I connect with you on LinkedIn? And what I would say is you don't need business cards, but you do need a QR code. A QR code has made a comeback. So have your LinkedIn QR code ready, have your Instagram QR code ready, have your email address ready, whatever it might be. A top tip for me is that when I'm networking someone, especially when I'm grabbing their email, I actually ask them to write it in my phone. Either I save it in the contacts list or I actually send them an email there and then because often you can get difficulties with spelling or remembering their name or sometimes if you're like me you might procrastinate in terms of following up or you might forget and so it's better to to get it done in there there and then than it is to wait because that waiting a lot of things might happen and so it may be difficult for you to remember to do the work when it comes to post networking Networking doesn't just stop when you leave the room. Networking is about how you carry that conversation on afterwards. So I would say within the next week or two, two maybe maximum, you want to follow up and you want to say, again, email, Instagram, DM, Twitter, whatever it might be. Hi, Sonia, it was great to meet you at that event. Here's a link to the resource that I was talking about. Hi, Sonia, it was great to meet you at the event. Since we've last met, I realize that there's a way in which I can support you and your business ventures. Let's grab a coffee for 15 minutes. Hi, Sonia, it was great that we met. I'm actually looking for a mentor in this space. 
would you be open to mentoring me for an hour a month for the next three months on this one topic? If so, let's have a virtual call. Those are three ways that you can follow up with a great and clear goal in mind, making it relevant to them and reminding them of something that you've spoken up about, but also benefiting them in the process. And again, the book that I have has so many templates in which you can follow up. A big part as to why I'm doing this video itself is because a lot of the questions that you will have sent me on TikTok, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, around networking is not only is there a fear when it comes to networking and a lot of anxiety, but also sometimes you get rejected and sometimes people don't want to network with you. And actually that's okay. What we're here to celebrate is the fact that you gave it a go and that you went into that room and that you gave it your best shot. What we aren't going to worry about is the fact that maybe they didn't want to connect or they didn't want to follow up or they didn't respond to your email. People are busy. And also there's a lot of noise that distracts us right now. So not everybody wants to be a part of everything. And obviously what I've shared sounds like that this is networking in person, but actually it's very similar if you're doing it online. If you are doing networking online, let's say for an example that you're attending a workshop, it may not be a networking or speed networking event, but you have the ability to actually share your information in the chat function, share your social links, and also respond back to other people as they're communicating and really increase that engagement and those conversations. You can take those same learnings offline. Just because you've connected with someone doesn't, and they haven't replied to your email or your message doesn't mean you stop. It means that you go back and you follow their social posts, you engage with their comments, you still email them with resources that might be relevant. I mean, I'm really bad at admin, but I make that really clear at every networking event I go and I go, I might not reply back straight away, but please follow up because it's not a reflection of you, it's a reflection on me. And once I've made that statement and it's really clear, people do follow up and we've had great conversations and partnerships and collaborations at the back of that just because I might have missed an email. But anyways, going back to that rejection and failure element, rejection sucks. There's no two ways around that, right? Failing sucks. And sometimes you feel like it's personal and sometimes you feel like you're the only one in the world that's failed and sometimes it just feels like you don't wanna try again and that's completely fine. So when I was, I'm talking 2019 now, 20, early 2020, I went to the Lord Mayor's office for a meeting that I was having with another person in the build, build, big building that they had around London Bridge. And whilst I was waiting for my contact in the canteen, I struck up a conversation with another person. And I think this particular person was an MP for one of the boroughs in, in, in West London. And they worked with schools and education. And I was like, this is great. Like, this is definitely my people. At the back of my mind, I was like, right, I need to connect with her. I need to make sure that we like seal this deal and we can do work together. We had a great conversation about 15 minutes. We spoke about life and education and advice and, and careers. And you know what, honestly, it felt like a really good somewhat first date. And then towards the end, I was like, hey, this has been a really good conversation. I think that we could really benefit um, from connecting and add value, especially in the education sector, because I'm trying to get more women and girls to build up their digital skills. And that's something that you work on in terms of your remit. Would you like to connect with me and we can follow up? And honestly, I thought I had it in the bag. I was like, this was a great, like random meeting. Of course, we're going to be friends. And of course, we're going to work together. And then I remember she got up and she put her jacket on and she got her bag and she was like, Sonia, I don't think that we can really add anything to each other's lives. And I don't think that I can really add value. So I'd rather not connect with you. And she just walked away. And that was my first real aha moment of, well, firstly, I was like a little bit taken aback and disappointed and maybe a little bit sad. It didn't really hurt my ego, but it definitely made me question everything I knew about networking and connecting with people. I took it quite personally. So I was like, oh, is it me? Like, they don't want to, is it me? They don't want to work with me forgetting that, you know, sometimes think these things happen. At the same time, it reminded me that just because someone's having a good conversation with you doesn't mean that they want to connect and follow up afterwards because everyone's form of connections are different. Their community is different. The people that they have in their circle, their immediate circles or their wider circles is completely different. So it's very subjective. And outside of that, it really just humbled me. And I was like, right, you know what? Maybe even though I thought we had a great conversation, sometimes failing or being rejected or not getting that version of success, it just reminds you that not everyone is the same and there's different personalities and different drivers, different characters out there. So how do you really adapt you and your communication style to suit everyone. 
And that was back in 2019, 2020. So obviously we've grown since then, we've evolved since then, and I'm still you know, a hyper networker, I absolutely love it. But what I can really tell you or what I can share has changed since then is I don't network with anyone and everyone. I really make sure that I network with people who I can add value to you or eventually can add value in me, eventually can add value to me and my industry and, and the milestones that I'm trying to achieve that I believe that can benefit from the work that's being shared in my wider business or kind of in my wider community and vice versa. And I think also one thing that I've realized over the last few years is networking also exerts a lot of energy. It's really exhausting and I'm ton of, I have tons of energy, right? But it's really exhausting to constantly network with people and so it's about quality, not quantity. There was a point where I used to go and network everywhere. And there was a point where I think for weeks on end, I would be at a breakfast meeting, a lunch meeting, and, and an evening event. But then really what I was doing wrong was I was going to anything and everything. I was spreading myself too thin. I wasn't following up correctly. I wasn't maintaining good relationships. I was just doing it maybe, well, I don't know if I was doing it for that, but I was just increasing my follower and social count, but I wasn't really increasing the substance or the, or the community that I was building. And also it was, it was terrifying and it was exhausting to the point where I burnt out really quickly and I, it just wasn't for me. So now I personally have a rule that I don't go to more than one networking event a week and I only go to one nighttime one a month that anyone that I'm connecting with, I will follow up with in a three week maximum period. And if they don't reply to that first message, I'll follow up again in a three week period. Within three months, I will. But most importantly, I'll be kinder to myself, which is really important when it comes to networking. You have to be kind to yourself because rejection and failure is honestly the most humanly possible thing that brings us all together that everyone experiences. Everyone gets rejected. Everyone fails. It's not always a reflection on you. Yes, you can adapt and you can evolve, but it's time and circumstances and it just wasn't meant for you. So post-networking, engage communicate, keep in touch, share resources and really add value, but also don't take it personally. And just make sure that your networking evolves as you do. So when I first started networking, I'd wanna network with people in the same or similar space as me. Now I wanna network with people who are high flyers and really successful and probably have you know at least five to 10 years of work experience on me so I can learn from them and I can ask them about the steps they're taking and I can be in a position where I'm really learning from their mistakes and also leveraging their insights. And I think that's really important also when it comes to networking. So I kind of feel like I'm waffling now, but that's okay. In summary, networking is key when it comes to unlocking new opportunities. 80% of your opportunities come through networking and people who build those strong social skills are 42% more likely to be happy. Networking is no more than having conversations, listening to other people, leaning in when you can add value, learning from experiences and really being in a position where you are building out your community. Networking is an ongoing activity and a muscle that you are building over time. As you level up, you have to level up your networking agenda skills even events that you're attending. It's really important to dress for success and to be confident in who you are so that you walk into that space confidently with charisma and you're ready to roll. Think about the three, two, one rule. So talking to three people, connecting with two of them, following up with one of them. And most importantly, if you are anxious about failing or if you've been rejected or it's an overwhelming experience, trust me and trust us that this happens to everyone. And so it's not something which needs to necessarily get you down. It's just you pause, you take stock, you flow through the emotions and then you try again. But this is, I think, all I can really say about networking right now. Of course, there's more things that you can pick up. They're all on the book. But also I have a ton of content on TikTok around networking. And this was very much created for all of my community members on TikTok who have been sending in questions. And so it was just the best use of everyone's time, actually, if I did just a long form video and spoke about all things networking. But of course, if there's any questions that you have or anything I haven't covered or any queries, advice, templates, resources that I can share your way, just drop them in the comments or drop me an email, hello at sonyabarlow.co.uk or slide into my DMs and I would be really happy to help you.